So today's video is sponsored by Minicanix of Stockport. Minicanix are a restoration centre. They restore classic minis, classic cars, Volkswagens, anything that you want restoring, they can do. They do all sorts of maintenance on other cars. Um, they organise and look after fleets of vehicles for local companies. Uh, they basically can do a bit of everything. It is a one-stop shop for all your motoring needs. Um, Paul and his team are dedicated to keeping these cars on the road. And I am very delighted that this video is sponsored by them today. And they have donated to the Budget Clubman a boot lid so that will be definitely going towards this car um, thank you very much to Paul and his team and if you haven't already check out Minicanics I will leave these details in the link in the description below so let's carry on with this budget clubman sit back relax and let's get the next few jobs off this is going to be a bit of an update video so starting with seam sealer and let's get this new boot lid lined up and see what repairs and assess the damage of this one it's a lot better than what we've got so without further ado let's dive into this video and crack on shall we hi guys welcome back to the channel welcome back to the budget mini clubman once again so today you've seen the title it's a couple of odd jobs and time for some seam sealer so this is a basically rip-off version i guess of tiger seal um i have used this brand before it's not bad it's called ek seal um it's really not bad it's it's pretty good it does everything the same it's over paintable it's pliable and stuff like that i like to sort of really go over the car with seam sealer because there's a lot of water traps on minis a lot of water traps on old cars in general um, and a lot of this wasn't done from factory so the underside of this car is really good so let's try and protect the rest of it for the future um the only issues that I've had to put in is obviously the floor pans and the seals. So I've seam sealed all of that um, and I've done the underside already. So off camera, the underside of the car has been done. We've got a bit more to do inside all the wings. Now I've got the A panels and bits and pieces on, um, but we are pretty much there on the underside, but I will do the inside on camera. So how much of it we've, have we got to use? I've already gone through nearly one of these on the underside of the car. Um, three of these on eBay was I think 15 quid. So it's not too bad, it's five pound a tube, isn't it? Um, Tiger Seal is about 10 pound a tube. So I've, like I say, I've used this before and it is pretty good stuff. It's not too bad. It just hasn't got the, hasn't got the big Tiger Seal name to go with it. But yeah, it's a very important part of a restoration in my eyes. Um, this is protecting all that work you've done. It obviously waterproofs it. It stops grime getting in there. And really, I think if you don't do this, all your hard work is bit pointless really um but that being said it wasn't like that from the factory and the cars have lived like this as long there's minimal there is seam sealer under the car but not as much as you know you you might want to put on so it's up to you how much you put on it at the end of the day so I've just literally attempted to get my hands clean yeah it's a messy messy job but well worth doing so go on up here we'll put the A panels on now go all the way around put the floor pans um, you don't have to be sort of clean with it I'm not because I put sound editing over everything I just want to get the coverage that's the main thing so all of that seam sealed up um, I made some little floor bungs, they're seam sealed in, so they're going to be completely adhered to the car along the back of the seat. Uh, where else have we done? All of my sort of repairs have all been done up back there. All up inside the wheel arches have been done. And yeah, we are pretty much ready to go. So just waiting on supplies now. So here is our new slash old boot lid. Uh, it's basically a lot better than what we got now. It's slightly corroded along the bottom edge there, but very, very minor. I'm going to dig it out, treat it, or weld a piece in if it really needs it, but I can already tell just by doing the shape test that it's a lot better than what we've got. 
So what we're going to do now, I'm going to whip the old one off and see if it fits any better for one because it's just slightly off on one side and I'll know if it's anything to do with the rear panel or if it's the boot lid. Um, then we can make this boot lid fit the car because this will be the one that I paint to put on the car. So once again, thank you for Mini Canics for donating it. Um, let's, let's get cracking with it. Right, so I don't think I've shown quite how bad the boot lid is, but the reasoning for getting rid of it is absolutely everywhere. There is filler cracking, rust showing. I mean, you know, this is the whole flavour of the back of the car. It's just filler. So someone's had a really poor attempt at doing it. And this is actually crumpled in. This is wonky. It's bowed in on top. And you can see again, look how thick the filler is in it. So it's definitely got to go. It's bit of a mess so let's get these hinges off um, I'll remove this I don't think I'm gonna be able to save it I, it's, I'm just not gonna put that much work into one of these I'll find another one I'm pretty sure I've got one somewhere uh, I'll replace all these lenses because they're just good to buy that five pounds and save the wiring loom out of it so I've got to remove the hinges and the boot lock and we will get the new one mocked up and see what happens
Right, so I haven't put the actual lock mechanism back in, but instantly, I mean, the other boot lid didn't fit bad around here. I haven't put the boot rubber back on either, so that will change things. It's perfect along there again. Obviously, these are all completely new. But the big part of me wanting to change the boot lid as well as it rotting is it's stuck out a lot here. And obviously this has had an impact both sides. So it's absolutely flush all the way. Really happy at that. So what I'll do now is I will put the lock on. I will put the boot rubber back in because that is important. And if that's still like that, job done. We can prep this one up. That is a good job, well done. The boot lid fits so, so much better. I'm really happy with that. So that's confirmed that my repair at the back wasn't at fault, which I was a bit concerned about because I started filling it and obviously I'd have to pull it out and refill it. And it still needs filler work anyway, it's not finished. But I was a little bit concerned that maybe I'd missed something or something quite, wasn't quite lined up. Um, that's why I really wanted with the hinge panel to get this lower edge here level with the bottom of the boot which is why I fixed it to the boot and put it in like Upbuild did on their channel and that really really helped with fitment so I've still got the exact same perfect line along there but I've also got the perfect line all around the edges and like I mentioned I did have all the way around there it's just that corner it was just bugging me a little bit and I was like well could the boot lid be sort of squashed and then making the outside come in so it's like been hit in the middle and looking at the number plate it looked like it had and then but the impact was both sides of the car not the center but then when i started shipping the car everything was rotten and bent so i don't know what sort of life it's led prior to 2001 when it was last on the road but it's definitely it's definitely suffered this poor old clubman so yeah so this boot lid i i don't know it's obviously just off a mark for me i don't know what it's off maybe mayfair or something like that but you're not going to know once it's all painted so i'm going to weld up the holes where the numb plate went that's obviously just something you, i want to do tidy it up um i'm going to go for like period style number plates on this i can't wait to really fit them so they just need two holes in the middle so i might leave the two that are there and go off them or just re-drill it one after paint and then i've just got a little section of probably about there to sort so yeah not too much work to do really but yeah i'm really quite happy with that or quite chuffed with that as I should say yeah that's that's a job well done so just a quick update really got the boot lid seam ceilings done next point of call will be painting the underside of this car so it's already been primed I've spot primed it in the areas I've sanded back everything everything's now seam sealed we are ready to hit some paint on the underside of this car we're going to go in with stone chip first then we're going to do the bronze yellow over the top, so I'm really quite excited to see this. Um, waiting on delivery for other bits and bobs, so just wait and see, really. I've got some other stuff on this way, so I've got like paint for the subframe. So once the underside's painted, I can get the fuel and brake lines in, put the subframe in, and start to slowly get it rolling again. Um, yeah, because it's really quite annoying being sat on stands because you can't move it about anywhere, but doesn't matter too much I guess but it's just once you progress and once it's painted underneath I can't wait to see the black subframes back in it so yeah stay safe guys I hope you're cracking on with your, your projects um, stay tuned on this channel because we are going to try and do a giveaway very soon so um, any of these videos now it sh should crop up but yeah catch you in the next one guys please stay safe and if you haven't already consider subscribing to our channel we've got loads and loads of content on its way mixed um jobs and restorations and obviously no shows but we're going to go on to our virtual shows if you haven't seen the brooklyn's 2020 virtual show which is a mix of previous years basically but yeah catch you next one guys stay safe and that's me gone